date. Welcome to Skate Date. Skate Date is your new favorite podcast made by two roller skaters who want to take you on a skate date. Meaning, we're going to talk about all sorts of fun things about the real world and the wheel world. That's right. I'm Shove. And I'm Rebel. And together, we are Shovel. Can you dig it? Yes. But you need a, a shovel to dig it, right? No. No? No, you're going to use your hands to dig out the shovel. Ah, and then you'll be able to f- dig future things as well, like no, this podcast. No, and then you become shovel. Oh, gosh. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, um, our topic today is accessibility. What kind of accessibility? Um, specifically accessibility for fat bodies. Yes. Because accessibility really is a very, very large topic. So we're just going to talk about this specific part of accessibility today. And then in the future, we can talk about other types of accessibility. <laughs> How no. how was your sexability? Sexability, sexability, sexability. Dang, that's a hard word, actually. What is your sexability? I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Honestly, I have no idea. It's been too long since she's been single, lady and gyms. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? That's fine. Um, what else are we talking about today? Uh, we're gonna talk about traveling with roller skates, and. That's it. Dope. <laughs> do we have an ad for the day? Yes, we do. Oh, crap. I need to get something for the ads. One second. Oh, yay. I'm ready. So, you know how I love tie-dyeing things? Yeah, you're obsessed. Why? Because I did something new. Oh, no. What is it? Socks! What? You tie-dyed socks? Yes, and they are amazing. They're crew socks, and they come in sizes 6 through 13. That's cool. Can you show me some? Yeah. Okay, so look, there's this one, which is like purpley, and then also has some green and yellow in it. That one's pretty cute. And then this one, which is like blue and purple. And then this one, which has like pinks and greens in it and then this one which is like green and then has some purple on the side (laughs) oh okay everyone is going to love them i think so they're exclusively on www.cheerstothequeers.com and they're available now you should get some (laughs) i'm gonna go buy some well, you don't have to buy some, silly, because you're my partner. I'll just give you some. Which one do you want the most? None of them. I hate them all. Just kidding. I want them all. Now, give them to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Um, buy them so that Shove can't steal them all. I will tie kill you. <laughs> Not if I don't tie die first. Okay, so... Yeah, so that's pretty cool, and cheersofthequeers.com is my shop, and it's June, so buy from gay people. (laughs) Should we go on to the real world? Yes, let's go. (laughs) The real world. My voice. (laughs) The real world. The real frog in my throat. The real world. (laughs) We're talking about accessibility um, and how it's not just for disabled bodies, but also for large fat bodies. Yes. So do you want to just go ahead and give a definition for what accessibility is in general first? Making things accessible. (laughs) Without using the word in the definition. (laughs) Making it easier to do day-to-day things. Not even easier, but, like, capable. Like, a lot of times there are things that our body simply won't let us do. 
So like think about if someone is in a wheelchair, but there's only stairs. So they would literally have to crawl out of their chair and up the stairs to get where they want to be. It's not accessible to them. They have to actually like have a way like a ramp to be able to get up. The world <laughs> has been created for a body type that is, you know, I'm trying to think of what, like, a, an able-bodied body, uh, able-bodied people. The world is created for able-bodied people, and so the world is set up in a way that if you have a disability or if you don't fit the stereotypical able-bodied human, then the world is more difficult to navigate. So accessibility makes it so anyone can navigate the world and not have difficulties navigating and doing things just that people need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so what does fat accessibility mean? Like, why do we need that? Well... Let me just talk about what it's like to be navigating in the world in a large yeah, body. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, then it's, like, going to be obvious, your question, the answer to your question. Yeah, cool. Okay, so yeah. things, once you get to a certain weight and size, uh, there'll be little things like not being able to fit in chairs going places, whether it's to a restaurant, a coffee shop, um, any place of business, really, um, having to force yourself in, to be small, which is, like, impossible. You're not a magician. You can't just shrink yourself. You can try to fold your legs and sit to the side. I've definitely gone to a concert in a theater where I had to have one butt cheek and then my other leg to the side and then I'm folded and I'm like, this is, guess this is my life. Or I've gone to a salon and sat in a chair and left with bruises on my thighs because I didn't want to say anything. I just pushed through. Um, but that definitely should not be the thing that we're doing. Sometimes I do ask if they have a fat-friendly chair, like, so that they know. Um, also, airplanes, like, some people can't even fit in them. And the only solution is just to buy two seats, which is financially just, like, fucked up to do to people mm -hmm. um then you can get extenders but a lot of times it's like you ask for the extender and then you could tell like they're bothered now they gotta go hunt one down um <laughs> and it's just like little things that like a skinny person which is you can have thin privilege and i know some people think well people make fun of me because i'm thin nowhere near the same because you're still able to navigate through the world without any um sort of amendments needing to be made um Versus in large bodies, there's just things day to day that you just don't have access to. You can't really do. Um, I know on my post where I talked about it, some people are even talking about like rides and amusement parks. Like you don't know if you're going to fit or not. And there's no way to really know until you stood in that line for two hours and you get into that and you're like, oh, nope, that doesn't work. And then you just have to get off the ride on the other side and say, yeah. I just wasted time. Um, and a lot of these things people don't think about, like you'll go to someone's house and like, let's say their backyard barbecue and all they have is those horrible white plastic chairs that we all know about that you're like, the worst. Mm, that's a hundred percent going to break. Like, I've seen people that I wouldn't even consider fat break them because of their weight. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I guess we'll sit on the ground. It's fine. Um, but there's just things in the world that some of them can easily be changed. Um, and it's just like, people don't take that into account. Yeah. I mean, do you want to talk about your experience the other day right now? Yeah, so I went to the dentist's office and then, thank God, it wasn't a long wait. Uh, as soon as I went to go sit down, I was like, okay, this is too painful and I'm over like forcing myself to just sit through the pain. So I just stood there and I was like, this is kind of annoying. Um, I did say something to the dentist later on, but it was just like one of those things where you're just kind of like... That it's like, oh, yeah. And then, like, you're like, you're not going to do anything about it, but okay. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I just stood there and waited. And it was just like I had Rebel take a picture. Because I was like, you know, I'm just going to post about it. Because, like, this is something that needs to be talked about. Um, it's definitely not the first time it's happened to me. It won't be the last. Um, and when I posted about it, it kind of blew up super fast. And a lot of people were sharing their stories, which is amazing. And then there were arguments, people saying like, well, you could have sat on the floor or like, you're ruining this business's rep rep 
this reputation. business his reputation. And I'm like, no, the business did no. that. Yeah, and I'm like, mm-hmm. what? And I'm not saying, like, don't ever come here. I'm saying this is what it's like to be in a large body. And for people to be, like, only side with that or be like, well, it's not that you're making it about you. I'm like, I'm not making it about me. I'm making it as about a fat collective, like the collective of fat people that mm-hmm. deal with this all the time. And it was just super annoying to see some of those comments. And I knew some of them were going to come. But, you know, it's just all they do is prove that what's wrong in the world. Yeah, and it's just, like, so many people... I don't know, they, it's like people don't see being fat as a marginalized experience that is anyone else's fault but the fat person. Yeah, because they think we did it to ourselves. Like, well, you made yourself that big, so why should you have accommodations? Yeah, and it's like, n- no. Um, one, that's ridiculous and so elitist of you. And two, like, there are so many... It, it honestly does not matter if someone does it to themselves or if they have something that is like a disease that causes them to be fat or uh, super tall, by the way, that also plays into this. Like, there should be equal access for everybody. Like, a person is a person is a human. Like, you should be able to access, like, a dentist office or, like getting into cars like I know that cars is an issue too like when we went shopping yeah. for cars it was like, like to go with specific ones some people can't even get MRIs because they can't fit in the machine so they'll be taken like far away just to like be able to get that for health and I mean that goes through there's so many things like that you're going to be judged for anyways for your size and then like Let's talk about, like, how embarrassing it can be, especially the first time or, like, I felt empowered because I listened to the podcast, She's she's All Fat, and that, there were some episodes that went over, like, all the ways to, like, command respect and, like, be like, this is fine, just breathe and ask for what you need and let the businesses know, and a lot of times, like, they can solve it for you or just say, no, we don't have anything that you can sit in, and then, you know, you just have to leave, but... I don't know, like, it's definitely one of those things where it's, like, embarrassing, and, like, you shouldn't, it sucks, like, I get it if it's happening to you, and I know your pain, but there's something to be said for standing up and, like, telling people, like, you should be able to be like, this isn't right, like, you don't have any fat-friendly, like, furniture here, like, I have money too, I want to spend it here, because I know some people, like, make reservations, go eat with people, and then you get there, and you don't want to be the person that's, like, well, this sucks, we need to leave, or, like, oh, you're already eating, so I guess, like, I'll just stand here or force myself, like, it sucks. Yeah, like, I don't know, there's just, like, a lot of awkward moments that happen when you need help, like, I had people, I had a lady say on, well, I don't know the gender, gender, sorry, I had someone on that post say, that the seatbelt didn't close on the airplane and they freaked out. So all they did was lay it across their lap and put a sweater and just hoped that they wouldn't notice and no one noticed. And that's like, what? Like, so you're risking your life because you're panicking and the knowledge isn't out there. I didn't know that there were seatbelt extenders until, until again, I heard that podcast and I was like, that's great. And like, I had people also say that like, I'm not even that big and it barely fits me. Like, what? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I also think that there's something else to be said here, and it's really important, and that is that, like, skinny people or, like, people who are small fats like myself, like, it is part of our responsibility to be aware of the situations that happen to people who are in bodies that are fatter than what is accommodated and we need to do our part in helping to make that accommodation happen yeah like if you see their seating where there are benches or like wider chairs don't sit in those like get up let the fat person sit there or like i just had another idea of like a situation like that well i mean that was something that i saw on that post that i honestly hadn't even thought of until that point I was like oh man if there is a bench I should make sure like I obviously am like aware 
when it's just me and you, like I'm always mm-hmm. thinking about like what will be good for you, but I don't think about it for other people. And so I need to be aware that like when there's mm-hmm. seating that's only like that is the only like fat friendly seating like I shouldn't take that spot if I can fit in the other chairs or like if you're carpooling you're like you don't put your fat friend squish in the back let them ride shotgun like Mm -hmm. the little things you gotta think about like oh I didn't think about how this isn't gonna be comfortable for my friends that are bigger like it should it's like always an afterthought because people don't think of it as something like because they never experienced it yeah it's the forefront you know, idea and the way people think about any marginalization. Like, if you are not experiencing it, it's not the first thing to come to your head. Yeah, and then there's, like, so much shame put on people to be, on being fat that, like, it's hard for us to speak up. So it's not like other things where people need accommodations where it's, like, people are almost taught growing up, like, oh, like, make sure you open the door for someone that's disabled or, like, make sure that there's, like... Um, a rail and make sure there's this like this is something they're taught like oh make sure we have like those people's back but no one everyone's raised to think that like fat is bad and that's a lazy person blah blah blah. so there's no sense of compassion when it comes to fat Mm -hmm. people so people of course like even if it's subconscious like are just like I'm not gonna think about that or worry about fat people problems (laughs) yeah and I think it's time that we do start thinking about it like we be aware and we take action anytime we see something happen or we see that there's like not accommodation. So Mm -hmm. like, for example, I do my best to always be like, Hey, do you have a chair with no arms or do you have a chair that like will fit someone who is bigger? Like anytime we go anywhere, I make myself do it because I think it's important that I'm sticking up and Mm -hmm. saying something so that, like, Shove isn't always stuck in that spot of always having to advocate for herself. Like, she has to advocate for herself all the time. So if there's a chance that I can step in and, like, take a little bit of that load off of her back, like, I'm going to do it. And so we all need to make sure that we're doing that for everyone in our lives. Like, Um, um, yeah. Yeah, and then there's, like, like, I'll tell a story that happened at work. And I know my workers listen, my coworkers, some of you listen to this, so don't feel weird or awkward because we both were there, existed. And um, so, like, they replace uh, new chairs for everyone because the chairs are really dated in the office. So they bought all new chairs. And right away, I saw all the boxes and I was like, oh, they're cute. Um, can't tell what size they are yet because they're in boxes, but I have a feeling I'm not going to fit in it. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I was just like, and it's that, that's the fear is a like fat person that's like fat, fat, like me, like I'm probably like the bottom of like the super fat, like when you start needing accommodations and, um, it's like something you fear is like every time you go somewhere, you look at something, you're like, Hmm, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to fit in that. And like, sometimes you just won't even try cause you're like, I don't even want to deal with it today. Um, but anyway, so I'm like, okay, whatever. Sure enough, next day I come back, all the old chairs that were wider that I fit in, um, were just outside, like to be like taken, like for free. And then like all the new ones were there and right away I was like, that's not going to (laughs) work. It even looked like, even if it was wider, it's going to fall apart, but okay. Like with my weight, but I go ahead and try to sit in it, and sure enough, I'm like, yeah, this is immediately going to break. It's already been out. Like, I can't sit in this. It barely holds one butt cheek. So, like, I went out, and I wheeled in one of the old chairs that were supposed to be given away, and then some other people were just like, oh, they're not really that comfortable for me, so they wheeled them in, too. So it was, like, not super obvious that, like, oh, the fat person needed a, the old chair. Um, but when the person that bought them came in, and they were like, why, like, why are people using the old chairs? Like, what's wrong with the new ones? And people were like, oh, well, I don't know, like, just whatever. And then I just said straight up, like, well, I can't even fit in it. And that was just met with, like, kind of not, not a bad attitude, but it was just like, okay, I think they were just upset that, like, a lot of people didn't like to do the chairs. But for me, it came off, like, harsh and personal because they were just like, well, then, whatever, like, you can get, like, just let me know what you want and we'll get you your own chair. And that's, 
like just as bad like it's like I don't want to be like singled out in front of everyone like I need my own special new chair because I'm fat it's just like I want to be considered in the beginning to have comfortable chairs and I was like oh I don't know if I should bring it up like but it made me feel kind of weird and I just went throughout the day but I think this person like thought about it because they were just emotional and they did apologize to me and they're like hey I'm sorry I said that like that wasn't right and they took ownership and like I'm all about like as long as someone recognizes like yo that wasn't cool and they fix it and they apologize we're good but anyways flash forward to like I don't know like eight months later or whatever and um same person working and organizing racks and called me over to make sure that I could fit in between to make sure if they could space it needed some more space they said okay now turn around like uh grab that box like are you good like blah blah and that's the kind of work environment I need and I was like so proud of that person for like acknowledging like hey let's not make it too small we need larger bodies to get in here and like I think like if you don't like address that there's issues like if I would have never said anything and pushed through like those little changes in the future wouldn't have been made to make sure that a body like mine could navigate through the warehouse. And I think that's why it's important to like, not just be like, oh, I don't like it because um, it's uncomfortable or like be like, no, like I don't fit because I'm fat. Because from that day on, they're going to wonder, can Shove fit here? Is this accessible for people like Shove? Like blah, blah, blah. And like, so that's why I think like it is good to speak up and not just like lie about it for fear of you being embarrassed or for fear of the other person being embarrassed yeah because I mean yeah other people might be embarrassed that they're not they didn't think about another person's situation and you kind of have to let that be yeah and allow it's them to awkward. grow from it yeah, yeah it's awkward and that's okay yeah and it's like don't be mad at someone for not understanding because like for, I think a lot of times people are just like, I don't get it. And then they're like, oh crap. And then like, I don't know. It's just like, it's a lot of people's eyes being open for the first time. Um, it happens a lot. Like, I don't know. I'm trying to think of like an example, but like sometimes I don't think I see what could be hard for other people until like you talk to someone that has that thing they have that's difficult for them to deal with. Um, I have an example that's like... I think would demonstrate this is I used to always complain about the yellow bumps in the road that are but when you like leave the the um what's it called when you like go down the sidewalk cheese graters yeah the cheese graters <laughs> like I used to always complain about those and be like ah stupid cheese graters blah 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 and then someone was like yo those are actually like really important and mm -hmm. um like specifically for accessibility for blind people because they then won't walk into the street. And I'm like, wow, I never would have known that. Mm -hmm. And I never thought about that. And I was like, wow, I should really stop complaining about this, this thing that like really helps other people. But that was just like my own blind spot. And so it happens often that there are blind spots that we have and that there are accommodations that need to be had, but because we don't need them, we just don't even think about it. And so mm -hmm. it's important to be open-minded when someone expresses to you that they need something that is some sort of assistance just to make their lives just to the same standard that a person who has whatever the like stereotypical body size yeah. and whatever is. And if you're a business owner and you're thinking like, yeah, but it's really expensive to just like replace all the furniture and do this and that. It doesn't have, have to happen overnight and it doesn't have to be the whole place, the whole salon, mm -hmm. the whole restaurant, like future business owners, please think of this before you even start mm -hmm. building things. And guess what? It's going to be hard for you to find things that are aesthetically pleasing and do that because it's bigger than you it's the people making these things mm -hmm. like we have people that want to open salons and can't find a single chair that fits people or like things are really hard or it's one and it's overpriced so the problem goes way up high but just try just try to make those differences and if it's just one chair to start like it's just like hey at least we have two or at least I have a chair in the back and I can pull that out for someone if they ask just little things like that is going to make not only people feel more comfortable, you're going to increase the people that come and you'll thrive more. It just, it's going to have a ripple effect where like nothing but positivity is going to come. Like, so you had to buy one more chair for 200 or more dollars. Like, that's fine. Like, 
that fat person's gonna go to your business and you're gonna make that money back in no time because they're gonna feel comfortable do you know like how many people like probably go to a salon to get their hair done and it's super uncomfortable so or they go and they realize oh I don't fit here and they don't even get their head hair done like that's hundreds of dollars just walking out the door or don't they don't come back to be serviced again and you're just missing out so it really if anything, it's hurting you that you don't have these things for fat people. Fat people have money, too, and want to spend it. We love to spend money. <laughs> fat ass and fat wallets. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do you have any other thoughts about fat accessibility? No, I think that's it. All right. Then let's move on to the wheel world. As skates will travel. It's the wheel world where we talk about things that have to do with roller skating. So in this episode, we really wanted to talk about traveling with roller skates because as the world is opening back up, there are going to be opportunities to travel and you're probably going to want to bring your roller skates with you because let's face it, the world is better on roller skates. Yes, it is. So, I have extensive experience with this. Shove has a little bit of experience with this. Um, but I think that there's, you know, there's a lot to be considered here. First off, because you have, like, depending on the type of skating you do, you have different amounts of, like, gear and random stuff you have to bring. Like... If you're going to a oh, skate park and traveling. I think that's the one thing I have up on you is that I've actually traveled with all my gear. Yeah, I've never traveled with all my gear. And yes, that was a little bit of a doozy to be like, I'm just going to take a carry on and a personal item <laughs> and have a helmet, knee pads, wrist cards, and skates. Yeah, and um, I definitely think that we want to specifically talk about airplane travel because like in a car you can just throw things in there yeah that's like everything easy. else like it's easy but with planes um what do you do when you're traveling with your stuff all right so i think like i could have like made it easier by just choosing to wear my helmet as a hat i probably would have got away with that but <laughs> What I learned from Rubble is just to have your skates kind of like on a skate leash, like with your backpack, so it looks like it's attached. To okay, the back. I need to say before this goes any further that this is not a legitimate way to travel with I roller skates. I was gonna skates. say that. Okay, I just wanted to give the like. That's why I was saying a trick. Oh, okay. So it's a trick because you want it to look like it's part of your bag and like they're attached. So it's like, oh, it's just hanging on the bag. It's fine. It's one thing. They might not notice it, really. You're not holding anything extra. You um, have to be kind of sneaky when you get to the point where there's, like, the TSA traveler, the <laughs> TSA people, though. And, um, because if you might want your personal item, too, like, you know, your other little bag. Um, so you don't want your roller skates to be your personal item, right? <laughs> yeah, I've, I mean, I have sometimes, and the reason why I had to start doing that is because I got caught one time. And I had to, like, try and stuff my skates into my bag that had all my other crap in it. And it was a disaster, but I did it somehow. But, yeah, you got to be sneaky. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, because, like, we've done... When we went to Cuba, we talk, we took our skates. And we had, like, the roller things. And I just wrapped the skate leash, like, around the little pull handle of the suitcase. <laughs> and I was like, there we go. That's, that's going to last. Um, but when I had to go to, where was that? Virginia, Richmond. Yeah. Richmond, Virginia. Um, I did the helmet. I put it in the bag and I stuffed like my pads inside the helmet, put my clothes and was like, okay, hopefully this works. Barely made the carry on thing. I had to like pay for it. <laughs> like, what is it called? Like checked in. Checked, yeah. yeah. And I was like super annoyed because the other plane didn't care. <laughs> But it was definitely a lot. And then, like, what's even worse than, like, making sure you bring everything is, like, the thought of losing your skates on a plane. <laughs> like, it's just so terrifying. So, of course, you want it to be, like, the thing you have on you. Like, Oh, I never skates. even thought about that. Like, that's terrified. Like, just trusting they're going to make it your way back. Like, skates are only, you know, it's not like a shirt. Like Yeah, I definitely have always carried on my skates. 
My biggest thing wasn't actually the getting it onto the plane. Well, that was definitely like a thing. But the thing for me was once you get to your spot, like finding a spot to sneakily put your skates, your carry-on, and your like a personal item. Because really, like I always bring like an, a big personal item. I'm sorry if any of you work at the airport and you're like really <laughs> mad at me right now. But a girl is extra, and she has lots of things to carry. So, um, and for most of my jobs, they don't give me a checked thing, so I just have to, like, go with the carry-on. So I will, like, once you get onto the actual plane, you, it's really, really hard to stuff your personal item and your skates underneath the chair in front of you. But usually you can find a spot where your skates will just like sneak in between like a couple bags above you. Yeah. <laughs> and then people are always really surprised when they like pull your skates out of the overhead like with their luggage. They're like, are these yours? And you're like, yes. And they're like, are those roller skates? <laughs> yeah. I Several times I have people be like, are those roller skates? Granted, that was before the pandemic. So maybe now people will be like, ah, oh, roller skates. But yes, whether you do it the correct way or the wrong way, you can travel with your skates now the bigger part of traveling with your skates is like cool i'm going somewhere i've never been before or maybe i have but now i wasn't skating yet mm -hmm. now i have my skates what do i do what do i figure it out do i even know if i can skate there what do you do uh, i put on my skates from the hotel no, before that oh oh oh, oh 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 um <laughs> i was like i put on my skates and i go out the door oh, Lord. um on instagram before i go on any trips i will do a call for people who are skaters who live in whatever area i'm going to and see if there's anyone who's willing to skate with me or if there's anyone who can tell me no you're yawning <laughs> and it's obvious <laughs> dang it so I do a call on my Instagram to see if there's anyone who lives in the location that I'm going to who's a skater and see if they'll like maybe meet up with me or if they're not able to meet up with me or they don't want to because they're like, who are you, creepy girl? <laughs> um, then I ask for recommendations of where to skate. So like skate parks or like if there's any skate meetups happening or like one time I and this was not even that far it was literally in San Diego but I was going down to San Diego and someone told me about this like it's not a rink but it's just like a big open spot they kind of treat like a rink and it was amazing and I never would have found that because you can't like look that up on Google you know but the local skaters are really into like showing yeah. other people where the skate spots are and so it's been really really cool and I go to really random spots with my job and I have almost every single time been able to find a skater to like skate with or to tell me where to go and that's been really yeah. really awesome and rewarding and you can always figure like ooh, social media sounds scary or like I don't even have that many followers like I'm not a you rebel with thousands of followers uh, you can look up skating rinks or skate parks even before you go. Like, or you CIB just do chapters. Yeah. Don't be like Rebel who doesn't even look up the weather before she travels. <laughs> I always have to do that for her because, like, I freak out. I hate to travel. Like, I like traveling. Attacked. But, like, I have to know all the information. What's the weather that day while I'm there? What's the humidity? <laughs> What else could I possibly be there? Do I need a swimsuit? Do I need this? So, like, I when she tells me, oh, I got to go to t Kentucky or I got, I'm going to Peru or I'm going here, I'll be like, let me check the weather. I'm like, do you know it's snowing there? And Those like, are all places that I've been yeah. that I was not prepared for the weather at. She was packing, like, shorts and tank tops to go to Peru for in the summer. And then I looked up and I said, do it you realize it's, like, winter time there? <laughs> And then she had to hustle and, like, borrow someone oh, from man. Derby's, like, travel clothes. Yeah. So, yeah. So make sure you're also aware of that. Because, like, obviously if the weather's horrible where you're going, like, do you even bring your skates or don't be that excited? Like, maybe bring them, but you might not use them. So or, just... like, bring them, but only bring, like, indoor wheels yeah. so that you could, you know, skate at a rink or something. Because that's definitely a conversation I have myself. Like, what wheels am I going to bring? Yeah, and everywhere you skate is going to be different. Different terrains, different weather, like, different people. Um, if you go to a rink, you're going to see so many different types of dance skating and everyone's style. Like, I think that's one thing that's cool, like, I think about going, like, down south or, like, Chicago and stuff and, like, seeing how amazing they are at the rings. Like, Cascade, down south, or if you go to Chicago, oh my gosh, I can't remember what it's called, but, like, 
every major city has a different style that they use completely. And, like, I would totally be intimidated because, like, I just get in a circle and do, like, a horrible moonwalk. And that's it. But, like, people go all out. But, like, even just to go and watch would be amazing. Yeah, that's definitely true. I will say that. Like, I went to, I can't remember where I went in Atlanta. No, no, no. Crap. No, I... Yeah, I went somewhere in Georgia, and I also went somewhere in Florida, a rink that I was like, ah, <laughs> like, this is amazing. But yeah, so traveling with skates is awesome. You see the world in a completely different way, and I also just think, like, a lot of times you end up in places, or at least I, I end up in places where I don't have a rental car, and I can see so much more of a city or a location when I throw my skates on definitely. as opposed to just, like, walking from place to place, which is definitely what I used to do. Ugh, and walking. Yeah, walking, ew. Um, yeah, no, walking is boring. That is very, very true. Yeah, and I definitely feel like even, like, the places that I've already traveled to, like, I've, I used to travel a lot, a lot just before I even started skating, and um, now I just want to go back to all the places that I already traveled to. I'm like, dang, if I could just go back in time and give myself roller skates, I wouldn't have to go back and, like, re-go to all these places so that I could skate there. Yeah, and I also, if you're in or around Southern California, I highly, 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 highly recommend doing the SoCal Challenge with your skates. Yeah, that was so and fun. And go skate at the beach, the mountains, you can do the Big Bear, and the desert, Joshua Tree, all in one day. It is very possible, and it doesn't even take a whole day. You're like, oh, wow, I'm already to the desert, or whatever order you do it. And you're like, oh, wow, that was easy. Yeah, and if you want to see what that's like, you can watch that video on my YouTube channel. I'll link it down in the description. <laughs> there she goes, promoting herself again. Tie-dyed socks and YouTube videos. She does it all. You know what? <laughs> I pour my heart and soul into my work. You're a workaholic, babe. Yeah, well, at least I do it with skates on. <laughs> um, anything else you want to add to the wheel world? Um, it was really, really nice. All right. All right, what are we doing now, babe? Find your skate. <laughs> <laughs> Find your skating. Wow, the giggles. <laughs> All right. So, find your skate day is where we try to help you find a little friend on the rolly shoes so you can go on skate dates together. Whether it's platonic or romantic, we're trying to make sure that you can all get reunited and it feels so good. Or connected for the first time if you <laughs> haven't been united with someone in the past. Everyone's been connected in one way or another in a previous life. All right, let's go. <laughs> look that Rebel's giving me. This is what happens when you find your roommate stash of like energy chews and you're like, ooh, they look like good. <laughs> and then you go, you're not supposed to eat the whole thing, right? And your girlfriend says, I think you can eat like three of them. I'll eat the other half. So then you eat all three and then you're like, mm, don't feel anything. But you don't do any sort of like activity so the <laughs> energy just like stays in your body. And then you eat dinner and then you come and do skate date and you're like, wee! <laughs> I just kicked in. All right. Drugs are bad, but gummies, delicious. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Rebel, stop looking at me like that. I'm not. I love you, babe. I love you, too. All right. So, yeah. So, skate date. So, you write in with a little bio and your pronouns, and you send us a little pic, like this little cutie right here. Um, and, then... and you send it to dearskatedate at gmail.com. Yes, sir. And, yeah, and if you're lucky... Okay, everyone's lucky. We'll post some about you on our Instagram <laughs> so that people can see you and be like, yes, them. I want to hang out with them. All right, here we go. I don't have... Oh, wait, I do have a name. Our Dear Shovel is from... Oh, wait. <laughs> our Dear Shovel is Cinna. And I'm so sorry if it's Cena and not Cinna, but I think it's Cinna, so let's jump right in. Dear Shovel... I've been listening to your podcast religiously for the last month and thought, why not try to find a skate date myself? Yeah. So Love it. My name is Sina. She, her. I'm 27 years old and from Germany. I live near Frankfurt. 
and wait, Frankfurt and Maine. Frankfurt and Maine. Where I study meteorology. Wow, there's always so many cool people, so <laughs> that, many cool people. that I feel like are just too cool for school. Okay, where I study meteorology. Where I study meteorology and <laughs> stop. You know, where I study, <laughs> babe. Stop. I'm just the reason why I'm like laughing is because you were like. Whoop! <laughs> Where did I do that? When you were trying to say meteorology. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Where ready. I studied me meteorology in my master's degree. <laughs> I have the giggles. Do you need me to read it? No. Where I studied meteorology. <laughs> Stop! Don't laugh. I had it that time. Okay. Where I study meteorology in my master's degree. I'm an absolute beginner skater and just got my skates two months ago. I'm looking for people to skate with. It doesn't matter if they are a beginner like me and we can suffer together or if they are advanced, but they should be patient with me and willing to help me through my struggles. I'm offering my company emotional support and cake in return. Ooh, what kind of cake? Oh my God, cake? <laughs> Once this whole situation is over, I'm looking into starting roller derby. Can't wait. Yeah. Besides skating, I have many other hobbies, which are mostly some kind of being creative. Crochet, knitting, sewing, drawing, dot, 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 etc. Also, I love cats and imagine myself having 10 cats surrounding me when I'm too old to be able to skate. <laughs> oh my God, that's so cute. So if I piqued your interest, you can find me on Instagram under my handle at Z-S-I-M-A-A. I'm looking forward to skating and having fun with you. Oh my god, so cute. The cutest. Hit up Sina. Oh my gosh, your oh eyes god, amazing. She's so cute. Wait, Lashes show. amazing. This is what she looks like. You really can't see, but that's okay. You'll see it on the gram. You'll see it on the gram. All right, and if you would like to um, be read about on our podcast, you can send in an email to dearskatedate at gmail.com. I just think it's cool that we have listeners in Germany. Yeah, it's really cool. We're, nas or, we're international. International. <sighs> Got lipstick stains on my passport. Think oh, I need a new Lord. <laughs> international. All right, let's move on to Dear Shuffle. <laughs> Miss Worldwide. Wait, that's not right. No. <laughs> Folks and hoes. Folks and hoes. <laughs> this podcast is a mess, but we're on to the next segment. So, this segment is called Dear, Dear Shovel. Shovel. <laughs> it's where you send us in your questions and we answer your questions. Uh, we don't necessarily have answers, but we do our best to answer any questions that you have for us. I mean, everything's an answer if I you mean, think about it. If someone asks a question and you say anything, that's the answer. We do provide answers, yes. But not solutions. <laughs> Sometimes we have solutions. We will always answer your question, but we might not always solve your problem. We can give you the promise of an answer. We cannot give you the promise of you feeling resolved leaving this segment. Um, yes. So if you have a question and it could be literally about anything, you can email us at dearskatedate at gmail.com and please email us because we need more questions. Okay. All right. Today's question says, Dear Shovel, I upgraded skates and my starter skates are sitting in a box under my bed. What do I do with them? I would love to give my skates to someone who might not be able to join the community otherwise. Love, Abby. Oh, that's a really nice question. So you go to Facebook Market and then you sell them for twice the amount of money that you no, bought them for. No, no. That's what everyone else seems to be doing. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> um, you know what I would recommend actually is like sending... One, like posting it on your Instagram, if you have an Instagram, because a lot of the skate community is there. And if you're connected at all with the skate community, I think that that would be a good place to like reach out to people. Yeah. And I also think that you could ha meet 
tag up with someone who has a lot of followers and be like, hey, I want to give my skates to someone and maybe you get that person to post like, is there anyone who really needs skates, who mm -hmm. can't get some, who are sized, whatever, and then connect to the skate community that way. I also know that some uh, roller rinks have like community boards and you could just leave something that says like free blah 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 skates, um, email blah blah, blah to inquire. Oh yeah, that's a really good idea. But if you don't want to take that advice and give your skates to someone who can't join the community, you can also turn your skates into, like, a pot for flowers. Oh, Lord. Here we go. Okay, so I have, like, this weird thing in my head where I'm like, things always work out a certain way. So there was this customer. She was... She was a pill, but whatever. She was also nice. But you know, like, those customers, you're like, you're kind of nice, but I also hate you, but you're okay. <laughs> like, you know, like, oh or you're gosh. just kind of like, uh, everything you stand for, I know I hate, but you're really nice to me as a customer, so it's okay, but we're going to avoid certain topics, like those type of people, uh. where you're like, oh my god, you're so nice, and they say something that's like, oh shit, like, you're not, you're anti-Black Lives Matter, like, but yeah. you're out of work. Like, oh my gosh, you're so nice, but, and they're like, all lives matter, and they're like, yeah. ah! But you're, like, working, and they're customers, so you're like, oh no, and they're like, we'll still bring you cookies on Christmas, and you're like, these cookies taste like racism, but you're nice. <laughs> One of those customers. Shocked that you continue eating the cookies, but they do taste. <laughs> the little bitter aftertaste. They tasted like guilt because they were actually delicious. But anyways, so she was one of those people. And one day she came in and she was like talking. And she's like, wait, you roller skate? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, you know, I, I used to roller skate all the time in the good old days. And you're like, yeah, oh, okay, that, I hear that all the time. Go ahead and tell me your story because they are fun to hear. And she's like telling me like, yeah, I used to roll around all the time, blah, blah, blah. I wanted to find my way back to it. So she bought some skates and she was like, I don't know what's going on, but skates are not made the way they were now. They're just way too fast now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And in my head, I always wondered, like, are they faster now? Or is it just, like, the, I think, like, the older you get, the more, like, sense of mortality you get where you're, like, this is now dangerous. Because I know that's how I felt when I first got my skates at 30, like, and, not, like, younger than she was at the moment. But still, it's like, when you're a kid, you just strap them on, and you're like, wee! Like, and you just fall all over the place without fear you get older and you're like mm. i could break something how am i gonna pay for that like this is crazy like all yeah, these it's other gonna actually impact my life so she's going on and on about how dangerous it feels and she's like yeah i bought new safety gear i got all this stuff blah blah and it's just like i don't need it anymore like i don't want it what am i gonna do with all this and then she's like do you know anyone who will take it and i'm like I mean, there's always people that need it. And I was, like, thinking about in roller derby how we have, like, the There's the a loner bin. Yeah, a loner bin, which there's another idea. If you know a roller derby league around you, donate it to them because mm -hmm. someone will start roller derby that doesn't have skates and they'll need them. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, like, she brings the safety gear next time. And it's, like, brand new. And it's, like, knee pads, elbow pads, and wrist guards. Like, a whole pad set. And I'm like, oh, dope. So, I put it in the trunk of my car. Never take it to derby. I drive around with these pads for maybe six months in my trunk. Oh my gosh. And one day Jess is at work and she's like, my knee pads finally just ripped all the way. I don't have any, like I can't afford to buy new ones. And I was like, what size do you wear? And she told me and I was like, wait, I was like, one minute, let me walk to the parking lot because we're working. And I go in my car, I grab it, and I just throw it to her. I was like, there you go. She's like, what the heck? Like, these are the perfect size. She puts them on, and they were perfect. And, like, she was like, great. I think she's still wearing them. And I was just Amazing. like, it was meant to be. Yeah. When you, begin, when you began that story, I thought you were talking about Moxie. And I was like, this is an interesting story <laughs> from this like this workplace and then halfway through I was like oh she's talking about coffee, coffee bean. bean yeah got it fuck coffee bean I still drink their coffee but it was a horrible place to work at in the end yeah <laughs> definitely but yeah I just feel like even if you're not in a rush to get rid of them you're gonna cross paths with someone that's like oh I need skates do you have skates and you're like oh my god I do so either like find a place to actively look for them or like the more you skate and the more people you meet, the more chances, like, you're going to find someone that size that's going to really need them or want to try them. Definitely. 
And there's nothing better, there's no better feeling than giving someone a pair of skates who really wants to <laughs> skate and they can't afford them. I'll also say there's no shame in just taking them to a thrift store because I know I have met some people that were like, oh, my first pair was from the thrift store. Like, I couldn't affair, afford skates and I found skates for like 20 bucks. And I think because that's Because people awesome. at thrift stores don't know how to price them. Yeah. So and they it, always undersell them. Also, like, I think we often think like, oh, yeah, the hipster that's buying from thrift stores and then like overselling it on their sites and like thrift stores really exist because of poverty and people yeah. can't afford new clothes and they need to have things that cost a dollar or under five dollars just to have clothes on their back and imagine like just being a kid and you're like I want roller skates or even like a teenager or something like and then you you find some that are under fifty dollars and you're like holy crap I thought I would never be able to afford these yeah awesome so there's some options yeah definitely any other thoughts for Abby. I hope you like your upgrade. <laughs> I know. I wonder what you upgraded to. Yo, my starter skates, when I got rid of them, I think I donated them to the league. Did you have the Rock 5s? I had the Rock 5s. <laughs> and they were torn apart. Your girl With ruined the... Wait, them. you had wings on them, right? I had wings on them. Oh my them. god, before wings became cool, you had wings on I your... had wings. I'm a trendsetter. <laughs> I had wings on my skates. I had the oh my gosh. I I think I I started with the poison wheels, the poison hybrid wheels. And I had been skating for oh my gosh, was it 6 months? Maybe 6 months. Oh yeah, I got new skates a year and so I skated on them for a year. And near the end of that year, I was skating in a circle because that's what you do in Derby. And I was like talking to the ref and I was like, hey, like there's a squeaking noise coming <laughs> from my skate. Like, how do I fix it? And he was like, you have shitty skates. <laughs> you buy new skates. Like you've been here for a year. Like you buy new skates. And I was like, oh, my skates are really not that good. And he was like, yeah, like, you've destroyed them. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Oh, my God, was it Kyler? No, it was, um, uh, what's Anita Nether's husband's name? Oh, my God. What's his oh, name again? I can't remember his name, but, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. Good times. Um, but, yeah, get that upgrade and do that good deed. Versus me, whose first pair of skates were the Moxie Lolly. And I was like, I can do the derby in these, right? Oh, my gosh. <gasps> oh, good I times. love it. I love it. Did you ever end up selling your Jackson 5 Nope, they're skates? still here somewhere. They're still here somewhere. Jackson oh. competitors. Oh, they're the Jackson competitors. Yeah, all leather. Wow, fancy. Yep, one yeah. day. Hmm. All right, well, that was Dear Shovel. Um... Nobody gave us five stars this week, so Again. we're starting to think that y'all hate us. Last <laughs> week I gave five stars to you listeners, but now fuck that. Five stars to Bowie. Bowie gets five stars? Bowie, former star of Two Girls, One Pup. Right. Five stars. You know, he used to be in here and pant like crazy and be super loud. So and loud. now he just chills. So he definitely is a pup with five stars. Bowie, we love you. We miss you being on the show. But he's always right here in silence. Yeah. And like, just in case y'all wanted a little update on Bowie, um, what Bowie has been doing is he, anytime we leave the house, finds a box that has any of my stuff in it and then lays in that box. Like a cat. Yep. Oh, so I almost forgot to say something. Um, I know it's probably, it's late now because it's Wednesday, but I hope y'all had a great go skate day. It was on Monday. Oh, yeah. It's Sunday right now when we're talking about this and we might do something. I don't know. We'll definitely lace up. So go skate. And, um, tell us, tell us how it went in the comments. Um, give us your feedback on Apple Podcasts. Give us five stars. We'll hype you up on the podcast. Um, if you're listening and watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. 
and most... <clears throat> it's not you too. Yeah. And, and most importantly, cheers to the queers. And <laughs> we'll see you next Wednesday for another skate day. Bye. Bye.